In this tutorial, we're going to use FreeCAD to create a snowman we can print on a 3D printer. To start up FreeCAD on the desktops we use in our center, find FreeCAD on the desktop monitor, and then either double click it or right click on it, and then click Execute. FreeCAD will open to a starting screen, so you'll have to tell it that we want to make a new document by clicking on this icon here. Simply click on it. After clicking the new document icon, you should see a nice clean area to work with here. You should also see one new document tab at the bottom. If you see two, you might have opened it more than once or started more than one new document and just ask your instructor for a little help on how to clean that up. For our next step, we're going to want to select a workbench and that's done by clicking on this button here. So, two steps click on the button and the second step is click on part. That's the workbench we want. Different workbenches allow us to do different things. The part workbench gives us primitives that we can add to our drawing, gives us ways we can manipulate the primitives, ways that we can join and intersect images, and ways we can measure them. We're going to make a snowman. So what we're going to introduce is going to be a lot of spheres because obviously a snowman is made by rolling up snowballs best represented by a sphere but we're also going to use a cube object and a cone object and also cylinder objects let's start by clicking on the cube object we're going to use that as a base for our uh, snowman to sit on so go ahead and click on that now When the cube object first appears, you'll be looking at it from a top-down view. You can manipulate views up here. Each one of these cubes represents a different way you can view the item. There are seven ways you can view our cube. There's the asymmetric view, front view, top-down view, right-side view, back view, bottom view, and left side view. What I want you to do for this step is click on each view and get a look at how it presents the cube from all the different angles. Once you've clicked on all of them, finish by clicking on the front view again. Another way you can move your object is by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and then simultaneously, at the same time, hold down the right mouse button. When you have those two buttons held down and you move your mouse around, you can start just manipulating the object in almost any direction that you want. Then you let go to return to normal use and you can go back to put it using these buttons to set it back to the front view. There's another way you can use your mouse to manipulate how you view the object, and that's by pressing the center mouse button down like a button. When you press it down like a button, your cursor will change into a crosshair, and you can move the mouse, and it'll move it or pan the scene from side to side or in the direction you move the mouse. Go ahead and try that now. Now let's start making some changes, but before we do, let's just change our view to the 3D view or asymmetric view represented by the first view cube. Click on that now. Then, the next thing I want you to click on is the cube label itself, right here. Give that a click. Once you've clicked on the cube label, you will notice a bunch of information appears here. We're interested in the length, width, and height. If you don't see length, width, and height, it's probably because you're in the different view tab. We want to be in the data tab, so if you're not seeing length, width, and height, click on the data tab now. All right, so let's turn our attention to these length, width, and height box. We can change the look of our cube by changing the numbers inside of them. So instead of having a length of 10 millimeters, which is the default, go ahead and change that number by double-clicking on it and then using the keyboard to type 40. 
Okay, now go to the width, double click on the 10 default value in width, and change that value to 40. Okay, now let's go to the height. Double click on the value of 10 that's in height now, and change that to 3. So we should end up with a cube that's 40 wide, 40 millimeters wide, 40 millimeters long, and has a height of 3 millimeters. And there it is. Now, it, we want to center this so we can see it all in the screen. Right click on the screen. The first option that will appear will be this fit all. Click on it. And now we fit all of our object into the scene. Right clicking and saying fit all like we just did ends up with a pretty zoomed in view. So I want to talk a second about something else you can do with the mouse wheel on your mouse. And that is you can simply roll your mouse wheel to either zoom in more or zoom out. And what I want you to do is zoom out so this base looks like it's a little farther away. Could you do that now? Now we're going to use transform. So to get into transform, there's two ways. You can either double click on the cube or you can right click and say transform, which is visually easier to show. So that's what I'm going to do. And I want you to do that as well. The transform tool gives us these arrows. The arrows, of course, can be used to manipulate our object to move it along the axes. The axes are actually shown on the screen at all time in this corner. Let me zoom in on them so you have a better look. Here you can see that the Z axis goes up and down. The Y axis uh, goes back to front and the X axis goes side to side. This all changes depending on your view. You can try to click on the different view windows up here and you will see your axis angles change here. Try that now. But when you're done, make sure you're back on asymmetric view here. What we're going to do with our transform is simply move this object back. And the reason for that is it's currently sitting on our spawn point for new items. And we don't want those items to appear on the rectangle, so we just moved it out of the way. Go ahead and click on OK here to let FreeCAD know you're done with the move. Now let's start building our snowman. The first thing we need is a sphere to be the base of our snowman. So start off by clicking on the sphere and introduce a sphere object. Our sphere shows up here and it's pretty obviously too small. So we're going to need to click on the sphere label to let FreeCAD know that we want to manipulate it. So click on that now. This will change the data that appears here to be the sphere data. So we're going to change the radius of our sphere, which is this bit of data right here. And it currently has a radius of 5 millimeters, which is about the radius of the eraser on the end of a pencil. Let's make it double click it so or drag over the 5 so it's highlighted, then on the keyboard type 20 and then hit enter. Now you should have a sphere with a radius uh, that is almost makes this makes the sphere almost as big as the cube it's going to be sitting on. Now let's use transform to move the sphere onto the base. So I'm going to right click and you click on transform to start that. You can choose either to double click or use the same technique I did. Okay. So now, see if you can grab the right arrows to manipulate it to go on top of the cube. Do your best to get it centered. When you think you have it centered, why don't you call your instructor over to show him how you did and see if he has any advice. After moving an object, it's always a good idea to use the different view windows, the different view positions, 
along the top to see exactly how uh, that looks from each angle. This angle, front, shows that I had left a lot of the sphere underneath the base. So I can use the up arrow now to correct that. Viewing it from another angle, it looks okay. From the back, it looks like it's a little bit more to this side than the other, so I can move that to center, having seen it from that angle. The bottom looks good, and this side looks good. I can also right-click on it at any time and say Fit to Screen. Do any and all of those things if it helps you better center your sphere on the base. Once you're happy with your transform, simply click on the OK button in order to let FreeCAD know that you're done transforming this object. Now it's time to add a new sphere to keep working on our snowman. So go ahead and click on the sphere object to add one in. I'm going to change my view back to asymmetric view and you might have to manipulate your view as well so you get a good view of where that new sphere showed up. Like before, you're going to have to select the new sphere and change its radius to, so it looks appropriate for a snowman. Why don't you try to do this on your own and then I'll show you uh, how I did it. Okay, so you've probably already manipulated your sphere here and resized it to fit on top. I'm going to try and do the same now. and Let's see if we did it even close to the same way. So first I'm going to select on Sphere 001 to let FreeCAD know that's what I want to work on. So I'll do that now. Then I'm going to go down to its radius value uh, to s resize it. So it's at 5. And I remember we made the big base marble 20. So I want something less than 20. So I am just going to go with 16. And there I've got a marble that should be, or a sphere that should be smaller and look like uh, a middle section of a snowman when I put it on. All right, so now let's move this with a transform. Transform, uh, this time I'm just going to go into it by double clicking. And you can see I've got the transform arrows. The arrows point in the direction they will pull, so I want to raise this up. And then I want to push it this way, I guess, along X. And then I'll use the green arrow, which is Y, to move it on. And I can see that it starts blending in with each other. Um, I can now use the X to move that. And I can see I'm off center because the center line of the top sphere does not line up with the center line of the bottom sphere. So I'm going to line up those two lines. I can also see I'm too low. So I'm going to grab my arrow here and raise it up. And that looks good from one angle. But what we learned before is to use all the angles to see if it looks good from every angle. And yeah, I'm glad I did because this one looks like I'm not centered this way. I'm just going to come over a little bit there and that looks excellent. Bottom up doesn't help me much but the rest look good. I'm going to finish with a front view. So why don't you use any and all of these techniques to center your second sphere on top of your first one. And when you're done Let's both have you finish on front view as well. Also, when you've checked all the other views and everything looks good, you can let FreeCAD know you're done transforming by clicking OK on top. What I'm going to have you do now is use your center mouse button to manipulate the scene so it's easier to work with the new objects you're going to put in. So. Uh, press in your mouse button to move your object uh, to a side that gives you a little more room to view and roll your mouse wheel back so that you're zoomed not quite as far in. So do that now. Now let's go ahead and introduce the head object which is a sphere again. Go ahead and click on that. And just like before, we want to transform the size of this. So to manipulate the object, we've got to have it selected. So go ahead and click on it. 
Then we're going to change its radius. So go ahead and find that and then click on its current value. Uh, the last sphere we did was 16. So I am going to guesstimate a value of 12 and zoom out and we'll see how that looks. Of course we can change that value size anytime we want. So go ahead now, uh, do that with the sphere you have. Now right click on it and say transform and see how well you can put the head on top of the body. Here I go up uh, doing it for myself and I'm only looking at it from a front end view so I don't have much control of depth but I can still grab the depth one there which is green. The color of these arrows always matches the, co the colors that you see drawn on the X, Y, and Z axis here. So the red X will be shown as a red arrow. Makes sense, right? So continue working with this until you think you've got the head where you want it. And then take a look at all the different angles to see if it needs to be manipulated to get it straightened out a little better. Don't forget you can right click at any time and say fit all. You might want to try that now. Once you have it where you want it and it looks good from all angles, go ahead and click OK to end the transform. Let's now add the nose to our snowman. So for a nose, I think the cone is the best object. So uh, I'm going to click on it now. Why don't you click on it now as well? The cone is going to show up where at our spawn point where everything's showing up. Uh, let's go right to clicking on the cone and then right click on it and go transform. Now we can uh, manipulate it to get it into position the same way we always have, uh, but we got to do one new thing. We've got to rotate it. And that is what these colored balls are. So the red ball rotates it around the x-axis as a pivot point. So we would grab that one and roll it up. No, down, it looks like, is the best way. So you want to rotate it so the smallest size, small side of the cone is facing you. You might want to change your view angle and grab the red axis because it seems to give you a little better control. So manipulate the cone in this step, you want to manipulate the cone so that it is nicely in the center of your snowman's face. So do that now. Now that you got it on your snowman's face, we want to double check our work just by quickly looking at it from the different angles. And for me, I can see that I'm not centered from my top down view. So that helped me out. You're going to find errors from different angles and just correct how it looks after you've checked it out on the various angles. Once you're happy with how it looks, go ahead and click on OK to let FreeCAD know that you're done with the transform. Now our nose looks pretty good, but it's not pointy enough to be a carrot or anything like that. So I'm going to point out that the uh, cone is a unique shape that has two different radiuses. It has, it's made up of two circles connected to each other to make up the shape of a cone. Um, the pointy end of the cone, which isn't that pointy right now, is two millimeters and the wide end of the cone is four millimeters. We can make this pointier by making this number smaller. So take the two and we're going to make it point one zero and say enter.
You can now see we've got a nice pointy nose. Let's think about adding the eyes. I think we'd be better off with a different view, so I'm going to switch to front view. Have you do the same, please. Then, let's just click on two new, actually one sphere. I'm going to have you add one sphere. So click on the new sphere object just once. Our new object is not selected by default, so you have to select it so that we can see its data values and manipulate it. It's obviously too big to be an eyeball right now, so let's change its radius. I'm going to change the radius from a 5 to just a 2. We can now right click and choose transform and move the eyeball into place like we have many of the other objects that we've already manipulated so far. Right click and choose fit all if your arrows move out of the scene and use your different angle views to make sure that the eye has ended up where you wanted it on your snowman. Once you're happy with the eye's location, go ahead and click OK to end your transform. If you're not happy with where your eyeball is, give your instructor a call and he can offer you a little help. If you are happy with your, where it is, you can move on to the next part of this tutorial. Let's start off by making sure we're looking at this object the same way. So let's all click on the front view. Now that you've clicked on front view, uh, let's click on the eyeball sphere. So that is sphere 003, so click on that. With sphere 003 selected, we're going to do something new using the part menu. So find part menu along the top and click on it. That'll give you the menu options underneath and from those find mirroring. Once you found mirroring, click on that. Mirroring takes a selected part, in this case sphere 003, and mirrors it to the other side of a pane. Um, and what does that mean? Well, we've got an eyeball here and we want to put it here. So which plane would this eyeball be on either side of? Well, we can figure that out over here. So since we're going to have an eye, if you imagine a little snowman right here on the center point of this, we would his eyes would be on either side of Z and they would actually be on either side of Y too. So that will become our plane. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to click on the down arrow and select YZ as your plane because that's what the eyes, eyes are going to end up on either side of. But be prepared for a little bit of a surprise because our base point is still at 000, which is the spawn point for all our items. Um, but let's see it in action. So the next thing I'm going to have you do is just click OK and do that now. So here's what happened. You did create a mirror of this eyeball, but it ended up over here. And the reason for that, I can show you when you double click on sphere 003. So double click on it now, and you should see that we end up showing where our mirror point is. And it's right here, which is a long way away from being in between his eyes. So we can actually uh, drag that. If you're close enough to see the green crosshairs, click on them and drag it over so that the green crosshairs are right above the nose. And that produces a perfect mirror point for our eye to be on either side. So do that now. Now that we're done moving our mirror point, you can right click on sphere 003 and say finish editing. 
The next thing we're going to do is some arms. So we're going to make the arms out of four spheres. So I want you to go up to the sphere and click on that four times. Do this now so you end up with four additional spheres. We're going to move these spheres with transforms again, starting with the first sphere, sphere 004. So go ahead and click on that sphere, or right click on it I should say, and say transform. You can now use the transform arrows to position this one to be like a shoulder for our arm. So we want it to be just about right there on our character. Don't forget to look at it from different angles so that you can ensure you've positioned it the way you want to. And once you're done, click OK to let FreeCAD know that you're done with the transform. We're then going to transform Sphere 005. So double click on that or right click and say transform and we're going to move this one so that it's like the bicep area of an arm. Use your different angles to make sure it's in place from every view. And once you have it in place, once again, click OK to finish the transform. This next sphere, Sphere 006, select it, uh, double click on it, use the manipulation tools to move it into a spot where it's kind of like the elbow and forearm. Use the other angles to make sure it's lined up the way you want to. So move that into the space you want, and once it's done, click OK to finish the transform. Now the final sphere, Sphere 007, is the one you're going to double click on now to start a transform there. This one is sort of like the hand, and the hand is going to be resting on, oops, on the hip of our snowman. Same steps, uh, move it as close as you can and then look it into, at it from a separate position. Okay. So move the four spheres into position to make up an arm, check it from a couple different angles to make sure it's good, and then when you're happy, click on OK to finish the transform. So right now our four spheres are four different objects. So I'm going to show you something we can do to fuse those together. So I'm going to have you click on Sphere 004, then hold down Shift on the keyboard, and then click on Sphere 007. This will cause all of the spheres to be selected. So do that now. Once you've got them all green, you need to click on the Fusion icon, which is this icon here. So go ahead and click on it now. You'll know you've created a fusion when the four spheres turn into one label called fusion. I want you to click on that fusion icon and we'll do the steps that we did before when we mirrored the eyes. So we start mirroring by selecting the item we want to mirror, which in this case is the fusion. So click on that now. Then, bring your attention up here to the part menu. Go ahead and click on that where it says part. Once you click on it, go down the resulting uh, entries and find where it says mirroring and click on that. Here we'll get the same dialog box we got before where we have to choose where we want to mirror. And since we're mirroring on either side of the snowman, just like before, again, this is going to be on the YZ plane. So select YZ plane. That's all we need to do. So to make the mirror happen, you just click OK. 
So click OK. Again, we end up with this kind of in a weird spot because the base area we're mirroring from is somewhere around here. And we can see that by double clicking on this new fusion mirror we made. So go ahead and double click on it now. By double clicking, we get the mirror and we can move it into the center of the snowman's body. So that's what I want you to do now. Move the mirror into the center of the snowman's body. You can look at it straight on or at different angles, just like you do other things to make sure you got the mirror where you want it to be. And once you're happy with the mirror's position, you're going to right click on the mirror fusion two or Fusion Mirror 2, and say Finish Editing. So do that now. Now we're going to give our snowman a hat. And a hat we're going to make out of a new object, this cylinder. So go ahead and click on a cylinder now, and then click on the cylinder label. Once you click on the cylinder label, you'll get some of the data for the cylinder. And what we want to change is the radius. So let's give this a radius of, let's say, 12. And that's not bad for a, a hat brim, but it's awfully tall. So let's change the height value from 10 just to 2. And now we have a cylinder that looks like this. And I think that's good enough to be the hat. So let's right click on the cylinder label now, or double click on it, so that we can turn this into a transform. We can take the transform and put it on the top of our character's head. By using the positioning tools and by looking at it from different angles to see if it's going where we want it to until it looks like it's in the right place. We can even use uh, the angle controls to give it a little tilt. So do that now. Position this top cylinder so that it looks like the brim of the hat and position it onto the head to a position where you think it looks correct. And then once you've checked it out from multiple angles, go ahead and click on OK to say you're done. So do that now. We're going to make the second part of our hat from the first part. So go to the cylinder, right click on it, and this time select Copy. Then right click again, and this time select paste. We can now click on the new cylinder so that it's selected and we should be able to simply change the height which is now currently 2 and let's make that 12 and you can see over here we got a nice tall hat, but it's the same width as the brim. So we have to change its radius from 12 to, let's say, 8. And now we can actually see that it turns into a pretty good looking hat. So do those two steps now. Congratulations on completing your snowman. Before you do anything else, just watch the rest of what I have to tell you. At the end, when I'm done talking, I'm going to have you shut down this tutorial. And then I'm going to have you hit the back arrow in the lower right hand corner here and go to the basics section for our FreeCAD tutorials. In there, you will have a tutorial that will show you how to save your files. If you're not familiar with it, you need to see this tutorial. If not, you could probably just save your files yourself but I need you to do that tutorial 
if you've never saved your files before or simply aren't comfortable doing that yet. All right, congratulations, and remember to proceed on to that next tutorial.